therefore, at first I thought I will take the book of uh, her cardiography, print it out, put in the PowerPoint, close my eyes and go through. Um, then I thought I'd need also angiography and then the modern book of MRI and the volume of my laptop was too small uh, for this, therefore I need another way. At first, what is a complex TGA? Uh, we discussed it previously and uh, today. We have different, um, different forms of com complex TGA and uh, this is a dextra and this is a, a congenital corrected transposition with VSD or with obstruction of the left ventricular outflow uh, tract or both of them with these features and also with ventricular hyperplasia or with uh, atrioventricular valve anomaly. And in this study um, published 76 in American Journal of Rungeon, there were 47 of 60 patients, they were investigated uh, uh, by angiography, they had VSD and also 36% had valvular subpulmonary stenosis. Therefore, this topic was very actual also um, uh, 35 years ago. Here, uh, we spoke also about stenosis at the pulmonary valve, stenosis in the subvalvular region, valvular and subvalvular regions. And um, in this paper published with Kirkland, we have the TGA intact and the septum and subvalvular problem with stenosis. Therefore, the information was given on uh, angiography, it could be well recognized the TJ uh, with cytosolitis, VSD, and severe subvalvular sub, uh, pulmonary stenosis. It also could be well recognized. The angiography was the main um, diagnostic tool, and this time also, these are the uh, printout from the original paper uh, 35 years uh, ago. This is a double outlet with a conus anatomy. And here is the congenital corrected transposition with discondant position in the regurgitation of the atrioventricular valve. Therefore, we should know what can be planned for correction nowadays. After that, we can proceed with our diagnostic. Different uh, possibilities uh, were already discussed today, and I put etc. because we do not know what we will have tomorrow. And what should we know for planning? We should know these topics. They, they are important from my point of view. The subaortic anatomy, the aortic pulmonary valve anatomy, coronary anatomy, VSD, and atrial valve anatomy. And uh, this is a uh, picture from the publication uh, from the Prague Medical Journal of Cardiology, 71. Six main anatomic types of TGA. I do not think that we can find the seventh one also if we perform echocardiography one hour or longer. And it is not our goal to say what type of the uh, TG this, uh, that is, but we should understand during the diagnostic the relations between the atriums and the relation from the atriums to the ventricle and to the uh, main arteries for um, optimal planning of the uh, surgery. Therefore, we should go through these steps also if it all is old, but it is uh, never, um, never die. We should know what, are, what is with great veins, with atrial ventricles and arterial. Therefore, the segmental analysis is extremely important for the, for, to make the correct diagnosis and the connections when arterial, atrial ventricular and ventricular arterial. We go through this, uh, through these pictures in, uh, at least in our head. And also, we should understand the interrelation between the semilunar valves the position of the arteries and the position of the corners. And the coronary arteries, this is a well-known picture from Jakub. We can perform uh, the echocardiography and mostly it is not, uh, or often is not possible to find the coronary arteries um, at this time completely. Sometimes we can see one, sometimes we can think this could be um, the second one. Uh, but if I ask uh, Michael uh, Hubler on the day before the operation and I'll say we are still, uh, we perform um, echocardiography since one hour, the child uh, is crying since one hour, we think perhaps uh, we find something, excuse me, but uh, should we proceed further, the situation is about 50%. Uh, I think uh, he will say nothing, uh, probably look serious and the next day the child will be operated and seven days later. 
can be discharged. And uh, thank you. And seven days later, can be discharged. And um, uh, probably I'll ask him what was the position of the coronary arteries uh, next day. But one topic seems to be very important for me. This is a publication from 93 from Boston. More than 400 infants with uh, TGA was observed uh, by uh, echocardiography, and in 29 of them, the intramural um, cause of coronary artery was find, found on the echocardiography, and 27, in 27, the diagnosis was confirmed at surgery or at autopsy. We do not want this, therefore it's better to make the diagnosis before the operation. And this is the pretty picture from the echocardiography that was performed 20 years ago. It was also possible 20 years ago to find the coronary artery and the two primary diagnostic criteria were defined major coronary artery arising from the contralateral septal uh, sinus and the cause of this vessel within the posterior aortic wall between the great arteries creating a double border appearance that we can see here and the different types that the picture was shown today already. But I think this is extremely important to take a look for us if we have any kind of such contour before, uh, in between the main arteries during the diagnostic. Therefore, if we go further, TJ with VSD, is it complex? If somebody asked me, I would say probably no, the VSD just should be closed, but I would say yes, because the VSD should be closed. And we know we have different types of the VSD, double committed outlet, muscular, perimembranose, and so on. And this is extremely important to know before the operation, especially um, if you think about the necessity uh, for, uh, for, for the um, valve uh, surgery, and if you think that uh, during the closure of VSD, the semilunar valves can be damaged. Uh, this is a publication from 88, Chicago Idris is a well-known publication, 15 of 50 with the JNVSD and six of them with Stausic Bing. And um, excellent results could be obtained with patients with and without VSD, but I wouldn't say that nowadays uh, we will accept the early mortality of 9% as an excellent results. The same with 13% mortality from 9 to 1. It is uh, approximately 25 years ago. The times are other now. And the first word that we can, that we can find here, I'm sorry, the size discrepancy of the great arteries can be an uh, important topic in the diagnostic for the uh, for surgery. And the last one from 2006, more than 1,000 uh, survivors and 15% the aortic regurgitation was found. And with other risk factors, the aortic regurgitation was related to the VSD. Therefore, the position of the VSD is extremely important to be diagnosed before the operation. If you have also the double outlet, is it complex? I think it is complex at first because of the different position of the corners, uh, double corners or sub aortic corners for TGA. We should know it before the operation and um, also because the initial results was not so pretty. Publication from 85, 27% of the mortality, supervised right ventricular outflow tract, obstruction, and in th uh, three patients, it was responsible for death. Therefore, we need this diagnosis before the operation because of this statement, recognized either at operation or postoperatively. But the pu publication of Castaneda stated that both patients with and with, the end, with intact uh, ventricular septum can be operated excellently by our um, arterial, uh, arterial switch operation with low, early, and late mortality. And also the incidence of the regurgitation was not so high, and at least it was mild. And um, if you think about diagnostic, then we can say all that we need, we can see from the echocardiography. This is a VSD, this is a conus, this is the one a similar valve and this is another one. And also the discrepancy in the size of the aortic valve and the pulmonary valve can be shown very well on echocardiography. 
they can measure all that we need with BSD, they can show where the kernels, the outflow, the um, aortic valve. And this is the uh, echocardiography two years ago after the uh, arterial switch operation, the patient with discrepancy in the size of the aortic and pulmonary valve. It is excellent results, but we have this thing, it is very mild regurgitation of the aortic valve probably to say, uh, um, is it a definitely excellent result? We should wait 10 or 20 years. For Tausig Bing uh, anatomy, is it uh, the next step of the complexity? And um, the discrepancy of the aortic and pulmonary signs, we can see here, oops, I'm sorry. We can see here this very small um, aortic valve and the thick pulmonary valve after the, uh, thousand, uh, after the damas K stencil operation in the patient with discrepancy of the both uh, vessels operated abroad. And this huge aneurysma after the uh, um, correction of the hypoplastic uh, aortic arch. Is it a uh, correct way for the operation we are still sorry about this small pulmonary valve and probably we should uh, treat this left pulmonary artery, uh, artery um, uh, uh, interventionally but we are very happy that the small pulmonary valve belongs now to the right ventricle and the coronary arteries belong to the aorta and to the left ventricle and we have no aneurysm in this patient. Therefore, the discrepancy in the size is a problem and should be shown, but the solution is possible. The pulmonary stenosis, of course, we should know where is it. Is it a valvular, subvalvular, or septal uh, bulge, or the additional uh, tissue of the atrioventricular valve? And in the original paper of Rastelli, 69, the angiography was the most reliable differential diagnostic test. But all eight patients who died revealed that the, uh, the subvalvular stenosis and was located in the left ventricular outflow. And these uh, two um, uh, pictures show the uh, angiogram uh, preoperatively, but the subvalvular area could not be clearly vis uh, visualized, and therefore subvalvular stenosis could not be assessed. The other publication regarding the size of the pulmonary analysis and bicuspid pulmonary valve, eight of 250 patients with set score of lower than zero were operated with uh, arterial switch operation and some of them, the score was minus, minus three. But during the follow up, we can see such a kind of increase in the pulmonary uh, analysis um, uh, um, uh, and um, two of them, nevertheless, were reoperated. Uh, and the publication from 2011, approximately 1,000 patients, 40 of them with bicuspid valve, but excellent results also for this kind of the uh, valve uh, pathology or anatomy. In this echocardiographic sample, you can recognize the aortic valve, and this is a pulmonary stenosis with a pressure gradient of 70, the VSD. And it was treated uh, by aortic uh, arterial switch operation and reconstruction of the pulmonary valve. Here you can see the patch of the VSD, and the rest gradient was about 30 millimeter mercury. And the other one patient, also with VSD, here's the um, aortic valve. But here you can see the left ventricle, the VSD page, and the aorta. Therefore, the interrelation of the main vessel, uh, vessels, arteries to the VSD is extremely important in the diagnosis for clear um, decision for the surgical procedure. And necessity of uh, arterial switch operation. 
especially in double outlet. You can see here, different position of the VSD, subaortic, subpulmonary, double committed, uncommitted, and different position of the arteries. All that we know before the operation, we need before the operation. And this is the um, steps, especially for the double outlet right ventricular. Thanks to Professor Alexa who gave me this uh, slide. We should know all this from segmental analysis to all these parts and regions of the uh, ventricular and uh, arterial anatomy. An interesting point, the tricuspid to pulmonary valve distance because it could be also the um, point for the decision if the interventricular tunnel is possible. If this distance is too small, then we have too, uh, a few places to put um, uh, this, this, this uh, patch in between and to connect the VSD with the uh, aorta. And in this publication, we have the sentence, uh, the statement that the restriction of the um, left ventricular outflow, uh, resection of the left ventricular outflow, chart obstruction, and pulmonary valvulotomy frankly permits the um, arterial switch operation. But the complex types of the VSD can make the Nikaida procedure as the best option, and the, some patients have no possibility for biventricular repair. In this five publication for the aortic root translocation on the uncle's half turn, we have low age, we have all possible types of the anatomy, coronary anomaly, or obstruction of the outflow, but the biventricular correction was possible. Therefore, what do we need? Echo, angiography, MRI, <coughs> and sometimes transosophageal echocardiography give us um, the excellent sample. We can see here aortic valve, stenotic pulmonary valve, outflow tract obstruction from the left ventricle, and very small restrictive VSD. Also, the threading of the mitral valve. You can see here the cord of the mitral valve that I go through the VSD to the right part of the uh, interventricular septum. Also, the angiography have nowadays the other resolution 40 years later, 35 years later, the left ventricle, the stenosis, outflow tract, and pulmonary stenosis, the right ventricle, the coronary arteries. Therefore, the decision can be uh, made but I think for the optimal view, sorry, we should take the other possibility and I would present it here with thanks for the group of Professor Kuhn and especially Dr. Riesenkamp for giving me this excellent sample. At first we need blood here and um, I would say now we have it. And after that, we need the ventricle, and it is also possible. Now we have the ventricle, and this is a reconstruction of the ventricular wall and the blood volume inside. And um, now I will, I will say the blood can blend it. Sorry. And. We should go inside of the ventricle. We have the VSD. This is a look through, we, we take a look, we, there's a fencer in the right ventricle. And probably we should go a little bit closer. Inside probably we can turn it a little. Or at first probably we would like to know where there's a water, where the palmar artery, with the branches. And this is the VSD, and if you look through the pulmonary artery, we see this muscle branch. This is stenosis, additional um, stenosis of the outflow um, of the left ventricle. Therefore, I would say this is a unique and excellent procedure and uh, possibility to get the information of the intraventricular anatomy of the ventricular septum of the main arteries and um, to make the, bet, the best decision for the surgical procedure.
Nevertheless, after the decision making for the aortic root translocation, we await this result. You see here the VSD is closed, the aortic is aortic valve in the correct position in the excellent function of the left ventricle, but Dr. Hübler will explain how is it possible. And some words to the cor uh, congenital corrected TGA. We also know, we also need the, um, uh, need to decide which way the better way and uh, uh, Dr. Hraske will present uh, us all these uh, points, but for me it's only important to say that echocardiography is extremely important in this decision making. We're looking for the wall thickness and th for the uh, pressure ratio between the left and right ventricle. If we should train the left ventricle for the double switch operation, and this is also our challenge, this is also um, uh, our screening because we do not uh, only uh, provide the data, we also have to think about the patients and to observe during the time. And in the current congenital corrective transposition, we should think about the possible hyperplasia of the right ventricle, about the, oops, about the aortic valve regurgitation on the right side, tricuspid, tricuspid valve in the systemic position, and also about the AV block. As you can see here, without the contractility of the right ventricle, we have no regurgitation from the tricuspid valve, it's only the atrium. But it's also possible to train, that was done in our series, the excellent function of the left ventricle that is much more bigger now and the muscular uh, wall is much more uh, uh, thicker and the right ventricle is small and well constructed. And in this one case, I would say it's definitely not possible. This is obstruction of the outflow from the left ventricle. You can see this additional tissue and we have also the crisscross connections of the other uh, ventricular valve. I'm sorry, it is not running, but you can recognize here the mitral valve and 90 degrees to the mitral valve is the position of the tricuspid valve. If the corrective surgery is still possible, if you take a look for these pictures, I would say yes, because this is a small right ventricle pumping now in the pulmonary arteries. This is the same operation and this is a mild stenosis of the tricuspid valve, but the clinical condition of the patient is very well. Therefore, I would conclude the screening for corrective surgery. We should know all that we can find about the anatomy of the ventricle and the great arteries, but my impressions was that if we find two ventricles and at least one great artery, the biventricular surgical correction should be possible. That is my question to our excellent surgeons in the best regards from our first patients of the aortic root translocation six years ago.